Hi, and welcome to another edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm your lore maker for this week, William Weisbaum, and I'm happy to be sharing with some of you the insights to one of our many solar systems featured throughout the universe of Star Citizen. We give you kind of an insight of what's going on here and some of the lore and astronomy that goes into creating all our really cool systems. So today's system is Kiel. So let's head over there now from Earth. So we'll do a handy little search here. Now, for if you haven't discovered it yet, what I'm using right here is the star map, and it is fantastic and a great way to browse our universe. So let's go take, oh, we should do a route so we can see all the jumps. Let's do that from Earth to Kiel. It's even better. Yeah, Kiel. Calculate. Loading. Oh, I found it. Eight jumps. So let's do it. Let's get there. We're going to hop a couple distances away. Ooh. Heading on through Ellis. Now we're in Magnus. Then we're going to jump to Stanton. Then we're going to go to Terra. And then from there to Hadrian. And then finally. We're going to jump on through the wormhole and arrive at our destination of Kiel. So Kiel has six planets, all of them wonderful and interesting, as you're going to find out. Uh, the Kiel system was first discovered in 2514. It's got a white main sequence F star. Hold it on right there. Let's look at it shine. It's beautiful. And it was, for most of its history, a major military hub during the Cold War with the Xi'an. And only recently has it started to kind of define itself in this post-Cold War era when we're starting to develop peace with our Xi'an neighbors. Um, it was discovered in 2514, as I said, by a merchant marine ship that was out delivering fuel. Uh, in the Hadrian system, and the ship's captain liked to take different routes every time they were making a delivery to keep his crew on their toes as well as kind of make sure that the outlaws couldn't predict where they were going to go. Um, so when one day when they were taking one of these new and different routes, they picked up something on their scans, and lo and behold, it was a jump point to Kiel. And there was only one system that was proved terraforming uh, ready, which was Kiel 3 Severus, but there was a lot of resources in the system. People rushed in and started trying to take advantage of it, and when more jump points were found to Baker and Horus, the system grew even more popular and things were looking up, and that is when, in the nearby system of Horus, the one and only Marie Sante discovered a jump to Xi'an space. And so if you want to find out more about what happened in the horse system, you can go back to our earlier lore makers that Sherry did. That was absolutely wonderful. And she talked all about this. But um, by opening up a neighboring system to Xi'an space, it suddenly changed how the government viewed Kiel. So the UPE all of a sudden said, oh, wait, let's put a break in all that private sector building. And they switched over the purpose and made it a major military hub due to its connection to the border systems, which would become known as the Perry Line around uh, in the 29, oh, sorry, 2540s. Let me get my dates correct. That's the least I could do. And so once the Perry Line was in place, Kiel served as a major military hub where a lot of the ships were stationed to move out all over the front. And Kiel is a major part of Ivar Messer's expansion of power. Uh, there was a lot of kind of anti-alien sentiment going on at the time. We just had our war, first war with the Tavarans was kicking off. People were very wary of the Xi'ans who we had a very difficult start with when we accidentally tried to terraform one of their planets. So tensions were already high and Ivar Messer used that to kind of generate and, and kind of draw to him a lot of the power that he wouldn't have otherwise. And a lot of money got dumped into the Kiel system to expand military bases and military stations. And that went on for hundreds of years until the Messers finally fell. Uh, and when the uh, 
Peace Act was eventually signed uh, that ended the Cold War between the Xi'ans and the UEE, uh, the system kind of lost focus as all the military money dried up and all the forces pulled out of the system because, you know, the UE was kind of trying to present a different picture of itself, less military focused. And Kiel was kind of left holding the short straw on that one. So for a long time, the system after the Cold War ended didn't quite have a self-identity, didn't have a lot of money coming in, it was facing really hard times. A lot of the civilian population that was there left when the military left. But in very recent times, Kiel has seen kind of a reversal of fortune and has had a great uptick. And the, most of that's been focused in on Severus, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But in the meanwhile, let's start going through the planets and taking a look at what we have. We're going to start with Kiel 1, which is this little guy over here. And this is a rocky mesoplanet. It's uninhabited. And it is tidally locked. Uh, so ignore the fact that it's rotating in our star map. Eventually, we'll tidally lock these things. Um, and so it's heavily heated and pockmarked on one side. Very fun. Some mining going on, but not much else. Next up, we have Kiel 2. We'll zoom in here. So Kiel 2 is a rocky uh, terrestrial planet. It's uninhabited. Uh, and it's not suitable for terraforming, but there is a good amount of resources on the planet and people have tried to get mining rights to those resources, but unfortunately the military has said no and has completely restricted access to the surface. And they haven't given a clear reason why, and a lot of people have kind of conspiracy theories going about what might be happening on the planet. Some people think that there's probably a secret military base there where they could be, you know, cloning messers, or maybe that's where the military actually created the Vanduul in a secret program to drive the war. Uh, that's probably not true at all, but still. From there, we're going to head on to the main named planet in the system, Severus, which is Kiel 3. Now, Severus is a rocky planet that's been terraformed, and it has a moon known as Amelia. Hello, Amelia. Well, we'll focus on the planet. The main capital is Eris City. And the planet is named after a famous admiral who had distinguished himself during the Second Tavar War. And this was the key military hub for the system. Um, and it's been covered in a lot of different various military bases and stuff. And all those, once the military pulled out, kind of went unused and were in desperate need of repair and things were looking at a really hard time. And the person who's been able to turn it around for them is a recent governor who was elected in 2903, which is Governor Tsur. He's a descendant of um, centuries of Tsurs who've lived on the planet. His great-grandmother served in the army on the planet and decided to stay after she left the service. Um, we give a lot of love and attention to the Navy because that's the focus of Squadron 42 and the Navy flies all the cool, fantastic ships. So we talk about various squadrons a lot of time, but the armies out there are doing their part to help defend the Empire. You know, they, they were kept on high alert for a lot of time because the UPE and then the UEE didn't know if they were going to have to invade a Xi'an planet or whether they were going to have to defend a planet that the Xi'an were invading. So the army were going to be a major part of that defense, and so there was a lot of drills and training done during that time. So when Governor Seward came into power, the, the main thing he did was, rather than just trying to draw businesses in in a general sense, which a lot of his predecessors have been doing, he very specifically sought out companies and tried to match them with services that he offered. So one of the first major coups that he did was be able to recruit RSI to come and open up a thruster plant, and that was kind of his first big success. And from there, he took the profits that were coming in from that new plant and reinvested it heavily into kind of a beautification program, a major makeover of Era City, of putting in parks and green spe spaces and opening up like nice apartment buildings for rent and giving a lot of kind of uh, tax credits and stuff for investments into the city. And it slowly started to work. Um, and people came around and with workers and other factories being drawn here. The, the major thing that happened as well was Sewer was able to convince the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, who we watched 
recently just had it, is based out of Kiel now. That wasn't always the case. The expo used to hop from system to system floating around the empire. But Sewer was able to say, look, we have these large, gigantic hangars. They'd be perfect for you. We're willing to put in a bunch of credits into upgrading them if you agree to let us house the expo here on a permanent basis. And the expo had just been running into troubles with different various locations not being able to support them and other such things. So they left at the chance. And Kiel has been the home of the expo for several years now, which is great. And that's just drawn a ton of people and like a ton of fancy hotels have sprouted up. And the restaurants here are growing quite into a well-known dining scene. And going along with that now that these people here, there's also trying to make more arable land to start cultivating their own food and produce on the planet. So that's exciting. So it's really on the cusp of blowing up into a really great planet. To go along with that, they just earned representation in the Senate. And it was uh, Sewer's daughter, Jana Thurville, was elected very recently as the first senator for the planet. So that was exciting. But coming along with the expo and all this added attention is that there was, during the downtimes, there was a lot of you know, criminal elements that kind of sprouted up to go along with it. And now that there's this influx of cash finally happening, uh, or credits as it were, the outlaws are striking like there's been a problem in recent expos where you have all these fancy ships flying in and the outlaws are trying to take advantage of that. So there's a lot of good opportunities for mercenaries at this time as the advocacy infrastructure is still being built out. Um, a few years ago, there was a keel, and along with all the other border systems, were part of Operation Scimitar, which was a, a focus assault by the advocacy on kind of cleaning up all these systems. Though some people suspect that that was less about stopping crime and more showing the Xi'an who were watching at the time that we meant business, because tensions had recently ratched, ratcheted back up when the Xi'an had captured a human that was accused of being a spy. So things were very tense, and so there was this big push to show the might of our advocacy in the system. Going on from Kiel 3, we have the Kiel Belt. There's still, even though it's been mined by the military for a while, there's still a good amount of resources to be found there that are now mining operations are really starting to kick in. Um, full speed. And there's also a lot of salvage to be had in the area because of how long the military operated here. Though they cleaned up a lot of their trash, so to speak, the belt was harder to clear up. So military exercises, various accidents and stuff have left some kind of outdated military machinery and ships floating out there. So some people have been making a good go at it through salvage. Moving on from the belt, we're going to head to Kiel 4. So, Kiel 4 is a gas dwarf. It's a deep blue planet. It has a high amount of methane. And it spins very fast. It only takes 16 standard Earth hours for it to make a complete equatorial rotation. So it's just whizzing along. And then we also have Kiel 5, which is another gas planet, but this one is a gas giant. There it is. And it has a huge radius of over 57,000 kilometers, as well as planetary rings, which are shimmering lovely in the star map this time of year. We go there to our last planet in the system, which is Kiel 6, which is going to be way out there. Find it. Ah, there you are. So, Kiel 6 is a protoplanet, and just like Kiel 4 has a very fast rotation, this one has an equally interesting parameter where Kiel 6 uh, takes about 122 years to make one trip around Kiel, around the sun. Um, and so, it's a big deal. So, there's a festival being planned right now for when it reaches perihelion. Um, which is when the orbit of the planet is closest to the sun. So when it reaches that point, there's going to be a big festival, and it will probably take advantage of Cerberus's, all its uh, spaces to hold that festival, and it will be a big economic boon to the system. So that's something to look forward to.
So the system was named by the captain of the Merchant Marine. He named the system after his good friend back on Mars who refused to ever leave the planet. So he thought by naming this whole star system after his good friend Kiel that he would convince him to finally leave and explore the empire a little bit more. But that was not the case. Um, Kiel died on Mars without ever having left. So as part of his will, he interred his body into a small satellite that travels around Kiel in kind of memory of this system that was named after him that he never got to see when he was alive. So that's kind of fun. So that sums it up for Kiel. So for a long time, a major military complex, and then the military left and it fell in hard times, and now it's found this complete new rebirth and it's very exciting. So hopefully you'll get to check it out for yourself sometime soon. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Lore Maker's Guide to the Galaxy. Hope to see you around soon. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.